Hi, everyone. My name is Sakib Nasir. I'm the product director at Phenom. Uh, today, we're going to be doing a Phenom product tour um, and focusing on how you can accelerate interview scheduling with automation. Joining me is my colleague here, uh, Tim Moulton, uh, who is the product manager for AI scheduling. And he's going to be doing the demo for our experience. Now, let's get right into it. From a problem statement perspective, we know that today recruiters have to jump through hoops and they have to do a lot and that is on their plates. They have to think about availability when it comes to scheduling, availability of the different interviewers, availability of the candidate, how to communicate with the candidate and the interviewers, the time constraints that are there. How do they manage different or multiple interviews, different sessions, different stages, last minute changes that they need to accommodate for, any technical difficulties that may come. And then obviously we want to minimize the candidate ghosting. So keeping all of this in mind, what is the phenom point of view? We know that candidates only have such small amount of time and they will walk away if you don't respect their time. Recruiters asking for interviewers availability and then last minute having to reschedule creates a subpar experience, both from interviewer perspective as well as candidate experience perspective. And we know both the hiring managers as well as the recruiters have a lot of tasks to take care of from screening to sourcing, to scheduling, interviewing, feedback. We know there's a lot going on in, in the world of hiring. Yet, talent shortages and limited resources are fo um, forcing companies to make faster hiring decisions. We know that 48% of hiring managers state that they had to make a decision a bad hiring decision because they were forced to fill that position quickly. With that in mind, right, the old tools and approaches weren't built to address these challenges. When it comes to candidate screening, it's time consuming, incomplete picture, subject to bias, impersonal, not scalable. And when it comes to interview scheduling, it's highly manual, error prone, constantly changing and resource intensive. Keeping all of these things in mind, what is our approach? What is Phenom's approach? Let's go right into it. We like to keep things simple. So from a scheduling perspective, it's the Phenom AI scheduling is recruiter initiated, or you can set up appropriate automations as you, you're going to see in the demo. We have direct integration to all of the calendaring systems and all of the video conferencing systems so that the a free, busy availability can be pulled in real time and shown to candidates versus the recruiters having to ping each manager or the interviewer for availability. Let's talk a little bit about what the outcomes we've seen in the past year in 2022. We saw that interviews requested were over 800,000. We scheduled over 550,000 interviews with 34% of these interactions were happening after working hours. So really bringing that value prop into picture of how automated scheduling is working whenever, even when you are not. We know that from recruiter hours saved, there were 357,000 hours that we saved. If you equate that to number of years, there's a lot. So 40 years, over 40 years. We know that 85% of the interviews are simple one-on-ones or screen interviews. And Phenom saved over 30 minutes there. With 15% of these interviews being complex, we saved over 90 minutes. These could be the panel interviews, the more complicated or complex rescheduling scenarios. That's how we made an impact. With that being said, let's get right into the demo. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Saka. Um, Saka mentioned my name is Tim, and I'll be walking through the demo. So um, 
you're seeing my screen now, we're looking at our CRM system. So this is where you're going to have all of your candidate profiles set up, all of your jobs will be pulled in over from um, potentially your ATS or whatever integration you like to set up. Um, and really what we're going to be focusing on today is once you have a candidate in there assigned to a job, in this case, our product manager job that you would like to interview, um, we're just going to walk through what that flow looks like. Um, there's a couple of ways to initiate an interview. If you are within the candidate profile, so here we're looking at Nick Foles, my candidate, we can see he's assigned to the job. And there's a quick and easy way to invite them to a job interview. So that's one way to do it. Um, however, I know a lot of folks like to work through from a job level. So if you're looking at all of your candidates assigned to a certain job, you can go through, you can review them, see what status they're in, and you can even multi-select them and then invite them to a job interview as well. So if you want to send out more than one invite, um, we do offer that capability as well. I'll go back to our Nick Foles candidate page just to focus in on a single invite, but just want to throw that out there. Uh, once you do invite them to a job interview, you're going to be brought to this landing page. And there's really two sections here. The top section is if you want to create a new invite from scratch. This is where we're going to offer a single interview, which is your single stage interview, which can either be a one-on-one -on -one or a panel interview with the candidate. Um, there's multiple interviews. This would be your back-to-back -back scenario where you might be having them go through a couple different sessions all within um, the same time frame. And then there's a concept of interview event where you might be inviting multiple candidates to come on site and you want you know more than one candidate to show up for the same time slot. You're going to do a hiring day or a walk around, something along those lines. Uh, before I jump into that, I, I will go through what it looks like to create an interview from scratch. I just want to highlight the section below, which is our concept of interview templates. And here is where if you are going to have a standardized process, maybe your first step is always a phone screen. You can create a template, which is going to store a lot of the information that you need to, you know, input when you're creating an invite from scratch and store it so that you don't need to re-enter it. And you can you know, very simply click on the template and send out the invite to the candidate. So as I'm going through each of these um, scenarios that I'm going to show you, just keep that in mind that a lot of that information can be stored and reused for future use. Um, just a quick call, interview templates can be stored at a global level. So if you wanted to standardize your process across your company, you can create those templates um, at a global level. Or there's a personal level, which we call created by me, where if you have maybe a slightly different process and you need templates that you know, serve your specific needs, you can create them there as well. So I'm going to jump into what it looks like when you're creating an interview. Uh, we try to keep it pretty simple, straightforward, and just you know, ask you for a couple basic pieces of information that we need for that interview. First, we're going to ask you for an interview title. So I'll use a phone screen as an example. Uh, then we ask who the interviewers are. So there's a couple of things you can do here. Um, one, you can see we have quick add options um, here with a lot of names. And this is going to be anyone who you've configured as part of the hiring team for that job. So in this case, you can see we have about eight, I'll add myself and maybe Sakib. And you can see that they're now populating as the interviewers. Um, you have the capability to remove someone if you need to. Um, if you want to set them as optional, in this case, I know Sakib's calendar is pretty rough to find a free time. And we just want to let them know that we're interviewing this candidate, not necessarily rely on him to be available for it. You can mark them as optional. You can also, in case you, know, you want to use someone who's not part of your hiring team, you can always search. And uh, this will go through all the employees that are eligible to be interviewers. Um, and you can add them directly from the search bar as well. Now, this is a, you know, great if you know exactly who you want to interview, but maybe you want to use you know, some rules for who should be the interviewer instead of specifying someone exactly. And that's where we have the concept of interview teams. Um, here's where you're going to be able to set rules saying um, anyone from the hiring team, um, let's add at least one of them from the interviewer role as either required or optional. And then you can add as many of these rules as you would need to um, to really fit and create that interview team that you'd like to use for that interview. We also offer the ability to set custom teams at this point. So if maybe you don't want to use the exact hiring team, but you want to use a subset, um, you could go through and create a custom team in the moment and say at least one or all of them are required. And, and you even have the capability to create teams beforehand and uh, use that team instead. So you don't have to create the custom team each time you're sending out the request. So in this case, I already know I have a demo team and I want at least one of them to show up on the interview as required. Now I'll go back and to keep it simple for a phone screen, I'll just mark myself as the interviewer, but you know, hopefully you saw how you can really customize exactly who's gonna be uh, used as an interviewer for this session. Below that, we ask, what are you scheduling? Um, so here we offer three options. There's online, which is gonna be any of your video conference integrations. And we offer all the standard video conference integrations. Here we're showing Google Meet and Microsoft Teams. If you choose any of these options, we're going to automatically generate a meeting link for both the interviewers and the candidate to join. You don't have to you know, generate that and include it in the invite. That's automatically generated for you. 
From a phone perspective, we're going to pull in the candidate's phone number. That's part of their profile. So here you're going to see you know, the number that's assigned to the candidate, who is Nick Foles. And then on-site is going to be the location of the job requisition. But you can edit this in case you have a multi-location requisition and you need to change this. Um, or maybe you're interviewing off-site somewhere. So you can always add in whatever location you need to for this. We also offer conference room functionality. So if you are interviewing on site and you want to book a conference room for the interview, you can go through and you know, find the exact room you'd like to use, or you can multi-select. And we're going to find at least one of those rooms that is available for the interview. And then there is a concept of room groups, where if you know that the same five rooms are often used for interviews, it's part of your process. You can group them together. And then we're just going to you know, multi-select that and be able to use at least one of the rooms from that grouping. Uh, since this is a phone screen, I'll go back to phone um, and choose the candidate's phone number, which is already pre-selected for me. Uh, we then ask for a duration of the interview. Uh, we offer 15 minute increments up to 240 minutes. Um, I'll just choose 30 since we're using a phone screen as an example, but just know that you can have pretty good customization over that. And then finally, uh, we're just asking how you'd like to communicate with the candidate. Uh, and if you really want to see exactly what communications are being sent back and forth, you can go into the edit template section. And here we're going to show you the email templates that you have full control over at a global level or at the request level, as you're seeing here, you can make edits and changes. So if you know that this interview is on site and you want to add additional context of how to get to a security desk or something along those lines, you can always go in and add additional context to the, the email that's being sent to the candidate, either at the availability request level, at the confirmation level, um, or even to your interviewer if you want to uh, provide them with additional information about this interview. We also include the capability to add attachments. So again, for your interviewer, maybe you want to attach an interview guide. Same thing for your candidate. You'd be able to use this option and add an attachment this way. Once you're happy with the uh, overall setup, the last step is really to select when can the candidate choose their time. So we have our two options. The first is finding free time, common free time across all of your interviewers within the next X number of business days. And that'll match up against their working hours and whatever they already have on their calendar. So as Saka mentioned, we use a directly integrated calendar assistant that's going to go and look at the interviewer's free and busy time and just find free, no, free slots. And that's when we know that they'd be available for an interviewer. So if you use this option, we're just going to go over the next eight, nine, whatever number of days that you specify and find those slots and offer them to the candidate. And I'll show you the candidate experience in a moment. Um, that's one way to do it. The other way, if you know that the interviewers you're using tend to have pretty packed calendars, or you're just curious, you actually don't know, um, but you've already talked to them and you've specified that there's certain time slots that they are free and want to offer to the candidate, you can go into our specific time slot view. This is where we're going to pull up a calendar view and show you the actual busy time that we're getting from their calendar. You can see here, not a lot of time the rest of the day, but there are some free time, uh, time slots on Thursday and Friday. Um, so I'm pretty confident there will be time slots offered to the candidate. But if I wanted to, I can go in and drop in these green blocks and these are the time slots that are going to be offered to the candidate. So I would offer a 1 to 1.30 time slot on Thursday and a 1 to 3 p.m. time slot on Friday. So this is just one way you can really control exactly what time slots you want to give to the candidate. And now you can also use an override functionality. So in this case, if I know that the 8 to 1 p.m. time slot for this interviewer, which is myself, I've already cleared with them that they blocked their calendar, but it's blocked so that they have time for interviews. You can actually just drag this on top of their free busy time and select this override option. And now we're going to consider the whole 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. block, even though they're busy, because we've indicated that it's going to be an override. So I'll just use the within X number of business days so you can see sort of how we do that calculation. But just know that you do have pretty good visibility into exactly what uh, time slots are free for an interviewer. And you can really specify the exact options that are sent out to the candidate. So the last step is just to send out the invite. You would just click that, and you would get a confirmation message that it was sent to the candidate, which, who is Nick Foles. So at this point, I'm going to pivot to what the candidate experience looks like. So I'm going to open up Outlook, and I will show you what that looks like. So you can see the candidate. I'm in their inbox now. They've already got an, an invite. Um, you can see that the messaging here is the same information that we had seen in that placeholder of the template, or in that template with all the placeholders filled in. So you can see it's for this job. It includes all the same callouts that we saw with just all the relevant information filled in for the candidate. And really, the important part here is this live link. So this is the part where if they click on this, we're going to go and launch them into an experience where they're going to be able to select specific time slots. So you can see here, 
um, they're given some information about what the interview is. They have different dates where there's time slots available, so they can sort of click through and just see exactly what time slots are available for that interview and just select one. If for some reason, none of these time and date uh, work for them, they do have an option to propose a new time. Maybe they're out for a vacation for a week. Um, they could select this option and they'd be able to specify time where they are free. And that would get sent back to the requester to give the requester some additional information about why they haven't selected the time slot and ask them if any of these additional times would work. So um, as the candidate, I'll go through and maybe I'm happy with the 11 to 11.30 slot on a Monday. And I would just confirm that date and time. And bam, they see a confirmation message right away that that time slot is now booked. That is their time for the interview. Um, and they will actually, if I go back to their inbox, they will get a confirmation message right away as well. It's a ICS file, meaning that it's a valid invite within their calendaring system. And pretty much any you know, mailbox is going to allow them to add it directly to their calendar. You know, they have the options to accept or mark themselves tentative or decline which really hopefully gets it directly into their calendar system where they're checking in to make sure they do actually show up for the interview. Um, from an interviewer perspective, so if we go back to our CRM system, um, we know that this invite has been sent out and the requester might want to be able to track this in a certain way. So uh, there's a dashboard where you could see any interviewers, any interviews that they are related to because they either requested it or they're the interviewer. It's called the My Interviews section within our CRM system. And here you're going to see any interview broken down by if it's upcoming, meaning it's scheduled, pending, meaning that we sent out a request to a candidate and it's not scheduled yet for one reason or the other. And we'll call out what it's pending on. In this case, Nick Falls, the same candidate we we're just looking at, had a separate interview invite with the hiring manager and he hasn't responded yet. We're waiting for him to respond. So in this scenario, you might want to look, look a, bit, a bit more information about the request. So if you click on it, you can pull up a side panel and you could see the exact, exact timeline around um, what has gone on with this interview request. You can see that it was initiated at a certain time. The link was actually opened by the candidate. So they looked at the live link and they looked at the different scheduling options and they didn't select the slot. So you got some information like the candidate has been engaged, but they haven't picked the slot yet. Um, and you might want to reach back out with them to understand why. And you do have actually an option to see the exact emails that have been sent back and forth between the candidate and the interviewers and the requester. It's all here within the same email thread. So you get full visibility into um, what's been sent to them, if they responded back with any issues, again, maybe they said that they're on vacation or something on those lines, you would get that full visibility within this email thread here. As the requester in this dashboard, I could also edit it. So um, maybe I talked to the candidate and there just weren't any time slots that worked and that's because the interviewer that was part of this invite um, was not available or didn't have any time slots. I could always edit it. I could remove the current interviewer and add a different one um, and then send out a new invite to the candidate. So you have full control over the invite through the dashboard as well. Um, also throughout the dashboard, there's a completed section. So you just be able to see how many interviews you've completed. Anything that's been canceled, I don't have any, or any that have expired. So if any have been pending, and then we reach past the end of the SLA window, it's going to move into the expired state, meaning that interview did not happen and never got scheduled. And then finally, uh, there's this action required tab. So here's where we're going to flag any interview requests that we think might need some help to get across the finish line. Uh, maybe the candidate hasn't responded. We you know we do have follow-up configurations. So if you want to follow up with their candidate because they haven't responded after a certain amount of time, we'll send those follow-ups. But if they still haven't responded and they heard us hit a certain window of time since the invite was sent out, um, we will flag that in this actions required tab and you'd be able to see the um, reason here. So if you click on it, it's going to give you some reason about why it's in this section and you can take action on it. Or if you know that it actually isn't at risk, you're just waiting for the candidate to get back to you. They're confirming a couple of things. Um, you can just dismiss this section. Um, so that's really a dashboard that at a personal level. If you are someone who might be looking at this more at a, a management level and you want to see all the interviews that are happening across your organization, you can go to the see all interview activity section. And now we're going to break it down into the same five categories with the actions required as well. But this is now every interview across your organization. So not just you, it'd be any interview in the upcoming state, any in the pending state, any in the completing state, et cetera. And you have the ways to filter. So if you want to filter all interviews for a certain requester, for a certain interviewer, certain location, certain date, you have that ability to filter. Um, we know it's been used for you know, covering someone who's out of office on vacation from the interviewer side and you need to you know, replace them and all their interviewers, you can do that by just checking what interviews they have within this dashboard. Um, so that's how you'd see you know, pretty good visibility into exactly what's happening um, at a requester level. 
um, from a interviewer hey, perspective. Oops. Hey, Tim. My apologies. I'm, I'm going to act like the, the product tour guide that I am uh, and ask you a question that came through via LinkedIn. Um, integration with Workday, how difficult? How are you capturing interviewer availability via Outlook? So can you can you elaborate a little bit what sort of integration we have? Yeah, sure. So um, from a Workday perspective, we have standard integrations where we'd be able to pull in um, all of your job information and candidate information. And there's different ways to do that. Um, but it, it's an integration we do with lots of clients. So that's pretty standard. Um, and from an Outlook perspective, uh, we have a whole process where uh, you would basically give us some delegated permissions. And then we have visibility into pulling just the free busy time of your interviewers. So there's um, no like security risk or anything and it allows us to just see hey socket is only free from 3 to 5 p.m on a thursday and that's the time slots we're going to offer to the candidate so you can't see that i have a focus time or i have one-on-one -on -one with tim or anything like that you can just see free busy time correct i just know you're unavailable for interviews at a certain time got it does the interviewer need to set availability or will you will you just use the system check availability they have in Outlook? I think we just answered that, but just pointing it out there. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll just use the free time within their calendar if you're using that external calendar integration. Cool, thank you. Sure. Um, now, the yeah, that was sort of the, the happy path flow for a single interviewer invite. Um, so, I can also show you quickly what it would look like from a back-to-back -back scenario. So if I'll go back in and I'll invite the same candidate to a second interview, um, I'll just go and just show you what a back-to-back -back scenario might look like. Um, so here you would select the, the multiple interviews option, and then you go and choose your back-to-back. -back. Here we're going to ask you for a title for the overall set of interviews. So in this case, I'll use a hiring day as an example. Um, maybe the first stage is a panel interview where I would interview with um, myself and Evan. And then I'll just make this, uh, I'll make it online for Google Meet and I'll select a 30 minute duration. Um, so that's the first interview. And then we'd ask you to add as many stages as you need to. So maybe the second interview is a hiring manager session with Sakiv, and that is also gonna be online. We'll make it Google Meet as well. And we'll set that for 30 minutes. So now we have two different sessions. And basically what it's saying is we're gonna find time with myself, Tim, and uh, Evan for the first 30, and then Saka for the next 30. Um, if you're creating a whole long session of interviews for a full day, you might want to add breaks. So you can add a 30-minute break in the middle where we would you know, specify what it might be for, in this case, lunch. Um, and you could, again, continue to add and move around your, your stages until you're happy with it. At this point, we would then ask you to go through the same options as sending availability to the candidate within X number of days. Um, these tend to be a little more complex, especially if you have interviewers who don't have a lot of availability. Um, so we do usually suggest to go to the counter view. And you can see here, there's not a lot of free time on the counters, um, but I can maybe go forward and look, I actually found a free time slot on Tuesday. Um, but again, it may be, since it is a bit more complex, you've covered uh, with the interviewers when they might be free. And you could select another time within their busy time and override it to make, make that as an option sent out to the candidate as well. From this point forward, the can experience should be the same as we already looked at. They would get a, a link, they would find the time slots that are offered to them, and they would select one. And then once they do, they would get a confirmation message. OK. Um, so that's sort of the, the happy path for setting out uh, new interview requests. And I've showed you what it looks like on the dashboard when you want to get some information about um, what it looks like when an interview is scheduled or when it's in an upcoming state. Um, so we did want to touch on a couple ways to make this whole process even a bit more efficient, and that is automations. So um, one thing that we ask you to do when you're setting up an automation is you, you ask, first ask you to create a template. And then once that template is created, we ask you to set some rules about when that template should be used. So what you, you would do is you go into the section we have called interview templates. You would create a new template. Um, in this case, I'll just use, again, a phone screen as an example, uh, six, seven, um, and we'll do it for a single interview since it is a uh, phone screen automation. Here we'd ask you who the interviewers are. So since it's a phone screen automation, I'll probably say when someone from the hiring team, one person, one recruiter is probably required for a phone screen. And then maybe we just want to let the hiring manager know about it. So we'll set them as optional. So we could set these two rules for the template. 
this is a phone screen. Again, I'll mark it as phone and we'll select a 30 minute duration. And then we ask you when can the candidate choose time within how many business days, we'll just say nine, but again, you could set this to whatever you'd like. And then we'd say that this interview template can be used for automations. So now I would save that template. Now it's ready for use. And I would go into our automation section within our CRM system. Now this is used for more than just scheduling. There's a lot you can do with automations, but I'm just gonna show you like the, sort of the workflow for the scheduling use case. So I'll call this the phone screen automation. It, and it's really a simple when then statement. So what you'd say is when the candidate's requisition status is changed to, and you could do any status. I like to use schedule because it keeps me locked in on the use case, but this would be whatever statuses are coming over from your ATS system. So whenever the requisition status changes to schedule, then immediately invite them for an interview. And we would use whatever template you just you'd want to use for this. In this case, we just created this template here. So basically what we're saying is whenever the candidate's requisition status changes to schedule, then immediately send out nine, avail nine days of availability with the recruiter, um, whoever is marked as a recruiter on that, uh, on that uh, job and then send it to the hiring manager as optional. Uh, what you can also do is you can add qualifiers. So if you don't always want this to happen when you change the candidate's requisition status to schedule, you can add qualifiers. So you could say only do it for jobs in this category or jobs with this ID or um, jobs in this location. So that's one way to control it. Um, you can also do it based on the candidate. So if the candidate has a certain tag or a certain uh, previous job title or uh, you know really any candidate uh, attribute, there's a lot here you can see. So you can really control exactly when this automation would um, execute. But once you hit save and run, um, which I'll do now, whenever you would be on the candidate page, if you were to change their status here to schedule, or if you have the right integration with your ATS system and you change their status to schedule there, then we would shoot out that availability email we already saw with the candidate um, to send out, uh, to ask them to pick a 30 minute phone interview with our company. Um, so. Great. Um, I do have a couple of questions coming through uh, LinkedIn. Uh, what sure. is interview intelligence? Mm, yeah, so great question. So we have another product called interview intelligence. Um, and I can just show you, you probably saw it when I was setting up an interview. Um, if you select a online channel, so Google Meet is a good example. Um, interview intelligence, if you have this additional product from um, Phenom, can be toggled on or off for that interview, meaning that we would send um, sort of like a backend bot to that interview as well, who would then record and transcribe the interview and provide suggestions to your interviewers in real time, and then provide some analysis after the fact around like what type of questions the interviewers asked, what the responses were like from the candidate. Um, it's a really cool product that gives a lot of information and uh, really replaces a lot of tasks your interviewers might have in terms of like taking notes and um, and also doing it in a non-biased way, since again, it's just uh, sort of transcribing the the conversation back and forth and doing the analysis based on that. As Saka, you might even have additional information to add there. No, yeah, you covered it very well. It's it's the whole idea of hey, when you're interviewing a candidate, you want to focus on the candidate rather than scribbling stuff, right? Writing notes. You will have the ability to do so within the experience, of course. Uh, but after the fact, the Phenom AI will will send out the insights, the summary, and and stuff like that. And you can you can do a lot of cool stuff. So if you want to learn more about interview intelligence, um, please reach out to us, and we can we can schedule uh, a demo as well. Uh, another question: Can multiple interviews be scheduled back to back according to availability of interviewers? Uh, if I'm understanding the question correctly. Um... That's sort of the use case we looked at here, right? Where you'd specify um, the order that you'd like for your interviews. And then at that point, you'd be able to look at that availability schedule um, at the availability counter. In, in your previous example, it was like a two hour long session, right? So um, yes, if you send out the availability for next seven days, nine days, we will pull the availability of the interviewers. And if they have uh, the appropriate interviewers for the appropriate sessions, they have availability, we will expose that to the candidate. So yes. Yep. Tammy, 
Um, do you have a minimum number of time slots that need to be available for the interviewers to be able to send the invite to candidate? Yeah, it's a good question. So at the point of um, you hitting send invite, we do run a check to make sure there actually are time slots available for the candidate before we send them a link. Because I, as you're probably implying, it would be a bad candidate experience if they got an invite with a link that just said there's no time for you. Um, in those scenarios, we do have an escalation process where we send that back to the requester um, to ask them if they can open up some time slots, either by asking the interviewers to identify time that might be busy on their calendar, but is actually available for interview. It's called our negotiation process. Um, and at that point, then updated slots will get sent to the candidate. But if we catch it here before you, we, like as you're generating the invite, we're just going to give you a message here saying there's no time slots for this invite. Please adjust the interviewers or adjust the availability window so that that, that invite wouldn't ever get sent out until it happens. We also do the check when the candidate's loading um, because you know you might send this invite out on day one, but the candidate might not open it until day three. Things can change on your availability between then and now. Um, so at that point, we do the check again, and that's where we might kick off that negotiation process to the interviewers. Got it. Cool. Tim, you have uh, anything else uh, to demo? I do have a question uh, if, if you don't. No, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I know that a lot of our clients ask this question, hey, we, we, uh, we love the CRM, we want to be in there, but there are scenarios where recruiters um, are in, let's say, Workday or other ATSs. Um, you showed us the one way to uh, trigger automations through Workday, as in updating the hiring status and kicks off the automation to send out the availability email. Um, are there other ways that recruiters can be basically anywhere on the web and still initiate interviews? Yeah, yeah, good call it. So we did build a Chrome extension, which can be used across multiple browsers. Um, and you'd be able to launch this within any page. So if you're in your Workday or your other ATS or even on LinkedIn, um, and you'd be able to open this extension, it opens as a sidebar. Uh, if you have a candidate who already exists, you could always search for them. Um, if there's a new candidate who you want to add to the system, you can also do it by adding them through a resume or adding them manually. Um, but once you have the candidate, um, you'd be able to, okay, I have two Nick, two Nick Foles, but you'd be able to go through and see um, what jobs are assigned to them. So it's probably this one then. Um, so you can see already he's got the product manager chatbot. Uh, this is the same candidate we're looking at over here, but now you're within this Chrome extension. Uh, if you wanted to invite them to a job interview, you could invite them this way. You'd specify the interviewers and it's the same flow you were just looking at, just a bit more uh, narrowed down since we are on the side panel. But yes, you can go through this extension, send out invites directly from here, add new candidates directly from here. Um, so if you are familiar or used to working within one system, you do have this information and ability available to you. Cool. Any other questions coming through? Let me just make sure to LinkedIn, nothing. I think just to um, uh, plug it in, right? Um, if you do have additional questions or comments or uh, you wanna get a, a dedicated demo, um, please do reach out to us and we can set that up appropriately. Oh, I see a one thing. How do you sync Outlook into this tool? Yeah, so we have um, a couple different ways to do it, but uh, the standard way is usually you create some sort of user on your side that then delegates permissions to us as Phenom. And then through that user, we're allowed to pull your other users free busy time. So that's one approach. There's also a concept of a federated partnership where um, your organization and our organization sort of handshake and agree that we are okay with partnering. And through that partnership, we can pull the free busy time of your users. So there's a couple ways to do it depending on um, what your IT is comfortable doing. Cool. Well, thank you, Tim, for doing the demo. Thank you everybody um, for, for joining us through LinkedIn and watching this stream. Um, like I said, any additional questions, let us know and we can take it from there. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks all.